So the squash bug is definitely a challenging pestering pest to deal with when we're growing squash or the squash bugs. There's a, a couple other insects in this pest complex that include the squash vine borer as well as the cucumber beetle. Um, but I'm going to give a little overview here of, of squash bug control and, and some non-insecticidal options as well. So the squash bug is what we call a true bug. Um, it's in the order Hemiptera. Um, they're a little bit over half an inch long. They can vary in coloration from dark gray to more of a dark brown coloration. Their, their eggs are characteristically laid on the underside of the leaves. And they do go through a number of different nymph stages, which we call instar stages. These adults are capable of overwintering in our climates, and they, they come out in the springtime, they mate, and then they deposit their egg masses on the undersides of leaves. In Missouri, research has shown we have at least two broods per year of the squash bug, so you'll, you'll likely be dealing with you know, multiple generations of this bug throughout the growing season. So the crops most commonly affected are squash and pumpkin, but they can affect other cucurbit crops, just not, not as often. Insects in this order, Hemiptera, they have needle-like mouth parts. So stink bugs would be a, another one in this order. So they insert those mouth parts into the leaves and they, they suck the juices and the sap out of the leaves. And this can impact plants because it really affects the flow of sugars back down to the root system and um, other other nutrients and water movement and the plant can be arrested. And so when you have serious infestations, you can see plants wilting because of this situation. The larger the plants are, the more tolerant they are of feeding. So controlling them on, on young plants uh, is definitely important because they can have a, a pretty rapid impact on, on young plant health. They're pretty sneaky though. If you've ever messed around in the garden with them, they seem to, to hide from you and, and move around the plant and keep an eye on you. They'll oftentimes be hiding under the leaves of the plants, which can make insecticide sprays challenging to get good coverage. So with these insects, early, early detection and action is critical. So, you know, and the small scale on the home garden, you know, you can remove these by hand, dump them in a, a pail of soapy water. Um, you can also use duct tape is really good at getting those nymphs. Oftentimes those nymphs will be congregated in a group, so it's easy to get a bunch of them at one time. You can also use that to remove the eggs or you can just squash the eggs under your fingernail. It's important to note if you are trying to use any insecticide, it's really hard to control the adults with any of the homeowner insecticides. So targeting them early at the nymph stage is the best way. If you are going to use any insecticides, I'm going to touch on non-insecticidal options here as we move on. But there are some synthetic options, permethrin, acetamipred, um, and there's also some organic options available. Um, if you are interested in organic options or, you know, insecticides in general to control these. But it's important if you are using any sprays to get really good spray coverage on the foliage, on the underside of the leaves, upper side of the leaves, as well as at the base of the plant. There's some other options that folks might use. So they do like to hide in the evening time. So placing boards or newspaper in the garden can be one way to lure them to an area where they'll congregate. And then in the morning time, you can collect and destroy them. Um, you know, keeping excess plant debris out of the garden reduces areas that they can they can hide and cleaning up at the end of the season can help reduce overwintering sites for these uh, for these insects, although they are capable of moving out of the garden and overwintering in other places around the home landscape. This is a really great non-insecticidal option. If you haven't used these before, these are floating row covers. Um, so this one here shows floating row covers that are placed over bent electrical metal conduit hoops. You can also lay them directly on the plants. The squash plants are capable of supporting this fabric. If you're going to use this for insect control, it's best to go with a lighter summer weight fabric. And that summer weight fabric will allow 90% light transmission. If you go to some of the heavier fabrics, they're going to reduce light transmission and they might cause heat accumulation underneath there, which isn't good in the summertime, but might be good in the fall time for season extension. It's important to have this on hand when you transplant the crops to prevent any of these squash bugs from getting onto the crop before it's deployed. So you want to secure the edges 
so it doesn't blow up in the wind and that doesn't get any opportunities for other insects to fly or crawl underneath the row cover. The important thing to note about this though is these row covers, they really do need to be removed at flowering. Um, if they're not removed at flowering, you're not gonna get fruit set on your squash or other cucurbits. There is another option though that is of interest to folks looking to avoid insecticide applications is what's known as trap cropping. And, and I had the fortunate opportunity to work with Dr. Jaime Pinheiro at Lincoln University, who did a lot of work on this topic. Trap cropping is basically a way of using a, a crop that's more attractive than the cash crop to pull insects away from the cash crop. So Blue Hubbard is the trap crop that was studied in Missouri. It releases really high levels of a compound called cucurbitacin. And cucurbitacin is an olfactory compound that helps insects identify the plants that they want to eat. So this one basically pumps out tons of this cucurbitacin, more so than our standard summer squash or pumpkins that we're growing. And it allows these insects to find the plant by releasing that compound. This has been proven to be effective for the whole pest complex of squash, which is squash bugs, cucumber beetles, and squash vine borer. And the way this works is you need to establish the Blue Hubbards sooner than you establish your cash crop. So you want these to be bigger, more visible, and pumping out more of that cucurbitacin before the cash crop or your summer squash is planted in the ground. You can plant these at the row ends. So you could do uh, two plants per row end, but you could also plant these in pots if you wanted to. So for small gardens, that might be a lot more effective option um, just because of space concerns with the spreading of, of the Blue Hubbard, obviously. This isn't one where you kind of set it and forget it. You do need to monitor these Blue Hubbards because they do still need to be controlled. So um, although this, this is a great option for reducing and keeping insecticide application off of your cash crop, you might still need to apply an insecticide on these Blue Hubbard trap crops. Now you could potentially control insects by hand. If you have a small garden, you just have one or two Blue Hubbard plants. But what was recommended, if you're looking for insecticide options for these, one thing that you could do is use a systemic insecticide. A systemic insecticide has three to four weeks of activity within the plant and it will kill any insects that consume the plant. We all wanna do our best to protect pollinators. So with this kind of situation, you would wanna remove the blossoms from the trap crop so that those flowers aren't attractive to bees and cause any potential issues with the bees. If you're looking for organic insecticide options, I mentioned this one earlier, Azera. You can get a, a small container of this if you're interested. It's a combination of two kind of tried and true organic insecticide options. It's a combination of pyrethrin, which is the chrysanthemum extract, and then azadiractin, which is a type of neem extract. Other brand names for just the pyrethrins would be pyganic, but this trap cropping system can be really effective. The floating row covers can be really effective. If you want to avoid insecticides altogether, the floating row cover is probably best, but and this trap crop system on a small scale, you might be able to manage these insects on the trap crop by hand. But really good way to pull the insects away from the crop that you're looking to grow and pull them to a more attractive crop um, known in this system as trap cropping. 